this is Ritesh Srinivasan and welcome to my channel. In this video, let's look at DALI2 from OpenAI. So what is DALI2? DALI2 is a new AI system that can create realistic images and art from a description in natural language. Okay. So given some text in natural language, can you create a image based on the text? That is what DALI2 tries to achieve. Okay. So for example, there is this text, an astronaut riding a horse in a photorealistic style, which gives you this particular picture over here. Okay. Then if you click on this text, which is teddy bears mixing sparkling chemicals as mad scientists. Okay. As a 90 Saturday morning cartoon, you get this image. Okay. So the previous one was this image, an astronaut riding a horse in a photorealistic style. This is the teddy bear image. So based on this text, basically this image has been generated and it is very realistic when you look at the text over here, right? Because you have these teddy bears, they are mixing some sparkling chemicals, right? And this is like a nineties cartoon style. Okay. So basically this system can create original realistic images and art from a text description. It can combine concepts, attributes and styles. Okay. Now over here, there is another one. A bowl of soup that is a portal to another dimension as digital art. Okay, the style is like a digital art over here. This is quite amazing based on this text that this image has been generated. Okay, now let us look at, you know, the, this system can also edit existing images from a natural language caption. It can add and remove elements while taking shadows, reflection and textures into account. Okay. For example, this is the original image. Okay. And there is this text select location to add a flamingo. So basically if you want to add a flamingo over here, right? A flamingo is added over here. What is interesting is that if you see over here, it also takes care of the reflection in the water over here. Okay. So this is another example of a generated image, another example of a generated image given this particular image and a text. So this system also has the ability to edit your images, right? Where it can remove or add elements. It, it takes care of shadows, reflections and textures into account. Okay. It can also create different variations of an image. Okay. So for example, this is the original image and here are some of the uh, variations of this particular image. It is able to actually capture this kind of a concept over here. And you see that this image has been generated. For example, if you select this image, you can see these are the different variations of this image, which has been generated over here. Okay. So what they are saying is that DALI 2 has learned the relationship between the images and the text used to describe them. Here it uses a process called diffusion, which starts with a pattern of random dots and gradually alters that pattern towards an image when it recognizes specific aspects of that image. There is this video also which explains over here. You can check out that video as well. Okay. So last year they had created something called as DALI OpenAI and this year they have introduced DALI 2 which generates more realistic and accurate images with 4x greater resolution. Okay. So previously it was 256 cross 256. Now it is generating 1024 into 1024 images. Okay. So this was the previous image of a painting of a fox sitting in a field at sunrise in the style of Claude Monet. Okay. So this is the image from DALI 2. 4x resolution is what they are saying. More realistic and accurate 4x resolution. So they say that DALI 2 is preferred over DALI 1 for its caption matching and photorealism. When evaluators were asked to compare 1000 images generations for each model, 71.7% preferred for caption matching and 88.8% .8 preferred for photorealism. So that is what they are claiming over here. They also have a research paper which I will just get into just to explain that system. Okay. So what they say is that uh, DALI2 is a research project. Uh, they do not make available in the API. So you have to actually sign up for uh, you know, preview waitlist and then probably they give you access to it. But they, what they're saying is that because the system can generate images, right? They have taken care of some safety mitigations like preventing harmful generations. So they have limited the ability by removing most explicit content from the training data. 
okay thereby they want to remove violent hate or adult images from this uh, you know generation of this they are also used advanced techniques to prevent photorealistic generation of real individual faces including those of public figures they also have content policy which prevents users to generate such content okay for curbing misuse and they are also talking about face deployment based on learning so they will initially deploy uh, you know release it to a limited number of people and then further based on the feedback they would want to iteratively improve their safety system okay now let's go to the research paper and see what is the key component over here so if you look at the paper over here what they use is something called as uh, you know they, this whole model is called as unclip so they have a clip training process over here right where they learn a joint representation space for text and images so this is something called as clip over here on top which is a separate paper which came out sometime um, before last year okay so what is done over here is that uh, they train a clip network to learn a joint representation for space for text and images okay what they do over here in the below dotted line is that now given this particular text okay a clip text embedding is uh, is first fed into an auto regressive or diffusion prior so this is one kind of a model or a, a neural network okay from which you know you get some kind of image encoding which is then given to a or an image embedding and this embedding is then fed to a auto regressive diffusion encoder which produces a final image so there are a lot of terms over here like clip right for which you need to understand what is a clip model you also have something called as diffusion uh, uh, pr prior a uh, diffusion decoder so when i looked at what is this diffusion models right so i got this paper which talks about you know diffusion models beat gans on image synthesis so it is a kind of model to generate an image so okay then i looked at what is actually you know a diffusion model so this is just a high level statement which they have given over here they say that diffusion models sample from a distribution by reversing a gradual noising process so basically in particular sampling starts with noise and produces gradually less noisy samples so the idea is here is that you have some kind of image embedding which is very noisy right so this diffusion uh, encoder actually repeatedly kind of either uh, does this diffusion process to produce less noisy images and that is how you get a final image okay so that is the uh, what is the concept which they have explained over here and they have given further details of this uh, i have not fully read this paper and even i find it a little bit difficult to understand certain concepts over here for example just this prior or auto regressive uh, you know basically auto regressive or diffusion prior does it produce the image uh, uh, embedding or does it use some part of this clip model to also get this image embedding or only clip text embedding is used over here um, those things are not yet clear to me but the idea is that you have some text which is fed into some kind of a clip model to get a text embedding which is then uh, given to some prior uh, model to generate an image embedding which is then further refined to give you the final image using this diffusion decoder okay that is the idea over here which i have understood till now based on whatever i have read uh, about this uh, you know dali 2 model based on this paper okay so probably if you are interested in this you can go ahead and read this uh, paper i will also put the link of this paper in the description of the video so here they have actually given some more examples of you know what kind of images can be generated using dali 2 okay for example they have given a shiba you know, you know wearing a beret and a black turtleneck um, this is quite interesting a propaganda poster depicting a cat dressed as a french emperor napoleon holding a piece of cheese a lot of thing needs to be understand over here right you need the costume of french emperor napoleon you need to fit that cat into it it needs to hold a cheese right cheese cube uh, a piece of cheese in its hand right so here you have a dolphin and astronaut suit in uh, on satan uh, art station okay so even this is quite imaginative right you have a picture of a saturn um, the planet saturn then you have a dolphin in an astronaut suit so i really don't know how much uh, images like uh, on this on which this model was trained for whether uh, they had concepts around an astronaut what you call suit uh, you know images of dolphins images of saturn right uh, here there is an image of a teddy bear on a skateboard in times square so this using this actually you can generate a lot of creative images 
okay so you can generate a lot of creative images using uh, dali 2 okay so here they are talking about variations of an input image by encoding with clip and then decoding with a diffusion model the variations preserve both semantic information like presence of a clock for example this is the original input image and these are the output images which have been generated by the diffusion model okay so this concept of clock is quite well preserved uh, some kind of overlapping strokes are also well preserved over here that is what uh, they are explaining over in this case of this logo okay so in this case the clock is well preserved but in this case of the logo these are new logos which have been generated by the diffusion model what they're saying is the overlapping lines are quite well preserved over here right so they give some further examples down the line about uh, you know variations between two images how are they you know generating the variations of the same image right uh, by interpolating their clip image embedding and de decoding with the diffusion model okay that is something which is explained over here right also they talk about you know this uh, attack okay uh, typographic attacks for example if this was a granny smith apple image you know your output uh, when it tries to go for a classification of the generated image it still says granny smith right but what if there is text present in this particular image then it says that you know just because of this text press uh, text is present this image can get classified as an ipod okay this is the probability but if you look at the generated images over here this text is not getting generated properly even though some words are getting generated over here with spelling mistakes over here but still you know it kind of retains this apple shape over here in most of the images okay what they say is with still with if you have pizza then probably there is some shape uh, shape deformation and other things happening over here okay so uh, surprisingly what they say surprisingly the decoder still recovers granny smith apples even when the predicted probability for this label is near 0% that is what they are telling over here okay in this example right and they say that clip model is slightly less susceptible to the pizza attack than the models investigated in some paper so you need to actually read that reference uh, paper okay so this is about a dali 2 um, it's quite an exciting and amazing system uh, to generate photorealistic art based on text captions okay but then uh, i'm always skeptical uh, skeptical about such uh, papers because uh, you know we don't know what is the training images they used we don't know how many training images used what is the data set it is kindly kind of uh, hidden from us over here and uh, we also know know what are the limitations they also claim some limitations of the system over here uh, but you know we still don't know what are the real world limitations of such a system right and what can be it used for or what it can be misused for but it is definitely an exciting development uh, you know how this particular model can actually understand certain concepts based on uh, the text and then generate images based on context so it is quite exciting i hope you find this video on dali 2 useful if you like the video please like share subscribe to the channel i will put a link to this blog a uh, link to the paper as well as to this paper which talks about diffusion models in the description of the video see you in another video happy learning